hiding the amounts is yeah it's, it's almost essential for for having good anonymity um, because as soon as you hide the amounts uh, a lot of practical problems with all those mixing approaches suddenly disappear wallet wasabi coming soon what's up what's up what's up bb people welcome to another cyberpunks 101 today we have another guest tim ruffin hi tim hey welcome welcome thank you for joining us uh so on here as you know we speak bit lingo which is for our newbies out there who's getting to know about bitcoin so let's get into it okay tim sure all right uh, first things first, give us a bit about you, your background, your hobbies, what you do, all before Bitcoin, that is. <laughs> um, so I'm a, um, my background is that I'm a, um, a PhD student in, in Germany. Um, so actually, um, this is where I got in contact with Bitcoin, so I... I haven't known about it before. Um, only during my, my studies, I got in, in touch with Bitcoin and then I thought, oh, this is like a super exciting thing and, and I want to do research on it. What are your studies and, in? <laughs> um, I'm doing PhD in computer science. Computer science. Okay, and you're originally from Germany, you said? Yeah, I'm, I'm originally from, from here. Okay, great. And what do you like? Your hobbies, dislikes? Favorite team or something? <laughs> I'm I'm not much into in, in, into into sports actually. <laughs> Although even I, I should do a little bit more sports now that <laughs> <laughs> um, I think okay. we, all, we all should do. <laughs> uh, yeah, sometimes um, I I like uh, I like playing board games for example as a hobby, which is um, I think more more common in Germany than in other countries. But we ah. do this as a thing here, so even <laughs> even if you're not kids, we, we play board games sometimes. Board games. All right, yeah. the fun ones <laughs> or like the more logical ones or strategic, you know. Yeah, like, like strategic ones. I also play chess ones, yeah. I don't do this oh, nice. anymore. Um, oh, keep it up. <laughs> keep it up. Okay. Um, what first got you into Bitcoin? What Pushed yeah. you. Yes, it's interesting when you found out about it at school, but what drove you to dig deeper and get involved? Um, it was more like like a coincidence um, because we, um, um, when when I was still looking for for a research topic, um, we had an idea which was basically the initial idea to to our first coin shuffle project, which was just related to Bitcoin. So. Um, we, we we knew about this this problem there, and, and then we had an idea to to solve it, and, and that's why my my first research work was about Bitcoin, and then I stick to the topic because I found it so interesting. You'd grown very fond of it. Okay, um, so you created Coin Shuffle. Can you tell us what is Coin Shuffle? Yeah, Coin Shuffle is a, is a, um, first of all I need to mention this is a project that I of course didn't do alone. Okay. Um, who, was, who was involved, if you want to mention? With my, my colleagues, um, Pedro Moreno Sanchez, who, um, who was a student here at Salons University, where I am. Now he moved to, um, to Purdue University in the US, okay. um, where also um, Aniket Kate, my, my advisor, is now, who's also, um, who also was involved in the, in the project. Um, and Coin Shuffle um, is a protocol to achieve some anonymity in, in Bitcoin. And the idea is that uh, several people get together and um, can use Coin Shuffle to mix uh, mix their coins in a, in a secure way. So we all, for example, we all have one Bitcoin we, um, and we, we try to send uh, our Bitcoins to, to ourselves basically. Um, but when we're doing that, we are trying to hide the relation between our old addresses that we have currently and some new addresses where we have the Bitcoins later. Okay, so give me a, a picture like um, yeah. 
if you're I'm sending one Bitcoin to you, mm -hmm. you basically think that there is some way to hide the link between us. Not not between us, but let's okay. let's say I um I have a I have a Bitcoin at, at an address. And maybe people know that, right? Because Bitcoin is not really anonymous. People sometimes think it's anonymous, but it's actually not. Not okay. So people may know that um, I have a Bitcoin at this address and this address belongs to me. And now we could, okay. we could try to, to get it together. Like let's say um, I find another, let's say 10 people who also have one Bitcoin with the same problem. All right. No. And our goal is now um, to um, to transfer our coins to to fresh Bitcoin addresses, um, which means um, for those new addresses, um, it's not clear for my new address. It's not clear for everybody that it belongs to me. Okay. And I, if, back to you. right. And if I now do this together with uh, uh, ten other people, um, then I actually have some kind of anonymity um, between. Or among those eleven people that that we are, um, because Being if you look at, with... right, if you look at one of those um, fresh output addresses that we where we store our coins after the after doing the mixing, and then it's not clear for uh, for um, for anybody which of these eleven addresses belong to addresses me they know to you. right they know that one of those addresses belong to me but they can't tell which of those that's why okay. it gets some anonymity okay understood um between the years 2015 and 2017 you made different uh, upgrades to the system um yeah. can you tell us the progress for yeah, sure. and Coin Triple plus plus what happened what were right, the upgrades yeah. So, so first of all, I have to add that what, what I what I described now is basically just coin join, um, mm. which is the, the basic technology um, where coin shuffle is based on. Okay. Which coin shuffle is based on, and uh, um, it was invented by by Craig Maxwell actually. And what uh, coin shuffle adds basically to this um, is that I don't have to trust the other people that I do the mixing with. Um, okay. Because if you like, if you do coin join naively, um, then at least, for example, the the other people, the other ten people involved in the mixing, they would know which address belongs to me. Oh. Or okay. you could also use some central server, and then the central server would know. So that's bad. So because we don't know who to trust, right? So. Okay. Um, that's that's what actually coin shuffle improves. So coin shuffle is a way to do those coin shuffles. Um, uh, sorry, to to do those coin joins um, with other but users. But in a safer but, way, without people knowing who you are. Right. So I, I don't have to trust the people that I do the mixing. But okay. that's the point of coin shuffle. And, right. Um, so our initial, yeah, our initial version was okay, um, but pretty slow. And um, that's why we, we went ahead and created a um, faster version, which is actually much faster. Um, and it's called CoinShuffle++. Okay. So in CoinShuffle++, that was for 2016. You just made it faster? Right. And, and, and actually even simpler. So it's also, so the main advantage is that it's um, faster. But it's also much simpler to implement. If you want to get this in practice, then um, it's also, it's actually easier to to um, implement Coin Shuffle Plus Plus. Okay, and this is. Did you make another change in 2017, or this was just 2016? No, no. This this is just a, a one one upgrade, basically with two advantages. Okay. It's less complex okay. and it's faster. All right. So that's the difference between Coin Shuffle and Coin Shuffle Plus Plus. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, when will we see confidential transaction come into Bitcoin? Do you? <laughs> that's that's a good <laughs> question. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> and um, I I hope it will be there at some point, but it's it's very hard to to predict those changes. I think um, um, 
Do you have a guess? Vidal, like for um, looking from a technical perspective, mm. um, it may be uh, it may be possible to to do this in in, in the next few years. Um, however, um, even if it's technically possible, it's um, could be a very controversial change um, because it it's um, yeah it, you need much larger transactions still, even though we have improved on, on the technology in the past. So, um, but there's still a large overhead, and um, because okay. then with confidential transactions, the the transactions would be larger, and then we. Um, yeah, we have less. We we have um, we can fit fewer transactions in the block, right? Um, okay. So and this is so it will be right. more compressed, and smaller. Yeah. Okay. So we if if actually people want to to push for for confidential transactions in Bitcoin, mm -hmm. um, they might end up in the old. Um, uh, block size debate, for example, because then people may argue, okay, actually this makes the um, system a little bit less scalable. Um, uh, so I, um, I think recent developments are, are pretty good for confidential transactions. So what what made them like so the the bike of the um um what are, the the bike what makes transactions larger are those um, range proofs that are necessary in confidential transactions. Uh, and okay. um, uh, these range proofs, um, so we, um, even even like one or two years ago, um, we had only pretty inefficient techniques to, to uh, build them. But now suddenly um, people invented uh, the bullet proofs technique which makes which actually make them much smaller, so it's much more feasible now, from a technical then, point of view, than like one or a year ago even. Yeah. So it is possible. So we come we are, we, are, we are coming closer. I think from a technical point of view, it's hmm. it may be feasible in the future, but uh, okay. really like introducing the changes, of course, uh, not only technical but also political issue. Yeah. Understood. Uh, what are the differences, going back to coin shuffle, what are the differences between coin shuffle versus zero link? Um, it's actually, um, the goal in, in uh, zero link is pretty similar. Okay. Uh, if you look at yeah, zero link, uh, it's, uh, it, it's also a, a method to, um, to do a coin join. And it, um, it has the same goal, basically, um, in, in the sense that uh, we, we, we should be able to do a coin join without trusting anybody. In Zero Link, the idea is that uh, we, we have a central server, um, but we don't have to trust the server. So the, the server basically uh, does some kind of mixing for us. Um, but even even though the server uh, performs this mixing, also the server doesn't know in the end which address belongs to which mm. user. Okay, so you um, don't really see that many differences in the two. Um, they're they're um, very different in the in the method they use to achieve the goal, but the goal is uh, um, the goal okay. is actually basically the same. Yeah. Okay, so it's just difference in the methodology. Right, and there, there are uh, small uh, disadvantages and advantages to, to both approaches, but I think they are both uh, meaningful um, meaningful approaches to do coin joins. Okay, fair enough. Would you like to give the disadvantages and advantages of both in your <laughs> eyes? Yeah, um, let, let me think about this for a moment, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no rush, um, no rush. So, um, I think like the main difference, um, the main difference is that zero link is actually um, even faster than than coin shuffle plus plus. Okay. Um, um, however, the zero link, um, as far as I understand, um, relies on um, an external method to to get some anonymity on the network. For example, the, the Tor network. Um, 
But TORS okay. is, a, is a method to, um, for example, to, to browse web pages with some form of anonymity. And um, it gives you basically anonymity at, at the network level. When you talk to somebody on the network, um, the other guy will, will not know who you are. This is the goal of TOR. And, but is uh, that a disadvantage? in your perspective, being reliant on this? The, the thing is that um, Zero Link needs Tor or a similar mm -hmm. techniques to, to, or a similar technique to provide the anonymity even for, for the coin join then. Um, this makes it faster, uh, but on the other hand, like protocols like, like CoinShuffle++, plus plus, um, um, don't need an external mechanism to, to um, yeah, that, that provides anonymity. So basically, the anonymity in CoinShuffle++ plus plus is, is built in, in okay. a sense, and it's also stronger because um, in in Tor I might actually be uh, de-anonymized. For example, if um, if certain parties in the Tor system collude with each other, then they may de-anonymize each. Uh, they, they, they may de-anonymize me. It's not very probable, but it can happen. And um, CoinShuffle++ plus plus does not strictly require something like Tor because it creates the anonymity by its own. Um, so that's the okay. advantage of CoinShuffle++. Plus plus. All right. So advantage of the link being faster. Disadvantage of CoinShuffle? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's basically slower than, than Zero Link. Mm -hmm. Zero Link is, is super fast in a sense. Okay. All right, two main ones. Um, this one might give you a little edge. <laughs> yeah. um, in 2050, my Cilium company with um, Daniel Krabis, mm -hmm. he implemented Coin Shuffle and named it Shufflepuff. Yeah. Right. Um, but it didn't go into production. Do you know the story behind that? Um, it's kind of unfortunate. Yeah. So. Um... I actually, I, I talked to um, to him and other people from from the project um, because they they had contacted us. Um, I think uh, um, I, I don't know exactly why in the end it it wasn't deployed, but one of the issues was that the implementation was was very difficult, and this is was because this was because uh, they were using the first version. Coin shuffle without the plus plus. Ah, okay. And actually, um, we were wondering about this because when when they were um, doing the project, we told them midway basically, okay, look, we have a new version. It's actually it's it's much faster and it's faster. so much easier to do. Then you actually should give up the old version and just um, start implementing coin shuffle plus plus because okay. it's not only um, faster, but it's also Probably even, even if they would have started from scratch, it would have been easier to, to do this. So at least this was mm. our um, point of view. Um, but um, we couldn't convince them and they um, um, they continued their Con Shuffle um, 1 implementation, basically. And I think this is one of the issues why it wasn't really like finished and um, I think then at some okay. point they just lost interest in the project and, and it was that at some point. Okay, I understand. Yeah, maybe if they had implemented a new version, it would have made things a lot easier. I guess so, yeah. yeah. Mm. And one of our last questions that might put you <laughs> off the edge too. Um, there is a BCH implementation, if you'd like to explain what that is later on, then of coin shuffle and, and it's called coin cash shuffle. Yeah. It is an elect it is an electron plugin, as you right. know. Right. What do you think about it? So um I, I looked uh, I wasn't aware when they were doing it, but some someone told me um okay. about the project and I and I looked at it and um it didn't take me long to to figure out that this was at least the implementation of this was totally broken, and um, it's actually hard to to do to get this right. So, um, and I feel a little bit um, bad, basically, that I haven't implemented it so far because uh, um, 
Yeah, I think like like Contraful or even uh, um, or like improved version that we that I didn't mention now, this value shuffle that works only with confidential transactions. I think these are these are projects that could be um, actually deployed in practice, um, but we need somebody um, who implements them. And implementing crypto is is very hard. So and. Um, so you need you need some some knowledge to to do it. It's not the average programmer who can do it. Um, okay. But it's it's like we if if I as a researcher say okay, um, you you need like expertise knowledge to implement it, but uh, then I don't do it on my own, right? So I should do it at some point, and I will do it so, at some point. I'm okay. sure. Okay. Um, Could you? Tell us about value shuffle that you mentioned. Um, value shuffle is um, basically another extension of, of so let's say coin shuffle plus plus was the, the second version of coin shuffle. Mm -hmm. And value shuffle is an extension to coin shuffle plus plus, which makes it um, compatible with uh, confidential transactions. So uh -huh. if we had confidential transactions now, um then we could use value shuffle oh, okay. and this is actually um then much better for anonymity um because if you have confidential transactions and the point of confidential transactions is to hide the the values right the amounts hmm? of, so that nobody knows the amount essentially yeah. and, whatnot. and huh? actually if you if you ask me i think that um hiding the amounts is yeah, it's, it's almost essential for for having good anonymity, um, because as soon as you hide the amounts, uh, a lot of practical problems with all those mixing approaches suddenly disappear. Um, it, it, make, it makes it a lot harder to, to trace something back if you don't know that. Right. So for, for example, one one typical issue that we have with all those mixing approaches, what I mentioned in the beginning. Is this example that we all have one Bitcoin? Or we have several users that have exactly one Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. But what if I don't have exactly one Bitcoin? So <laughs> then, I, yeah, if, if if I want to mix with you and I have one, I don't know, one point five Bitcoins, and you have only one, then I can only mix one, and this th that means right zero point five Bitcoins remain, and I still have them, and that they are not anonymized in a sense. Um, this is just one example, and there are more examples that just, um, if, if you have like confidential transactions, all these problems just disappear and mm -hmm. everything related to mixing is so much easier. Um, that's why we, oh. <laughs> that's, that, why. that's why we should have confidential sure. transactions at some point. Yeah. That is at some point yeah. in the future. Yeah. All right. I, so I it's currently it will be there at some point. Yeah. Oh, I hope so too. <laughs> um, so currently. Yeah. You're working on value shuffle, right? Um, that's your future project or current project, right? Or are you working on something else um, as well? So um, for like regarding implementations of all this, this shuffling um, things, um, I actually did an internship last year with Blockstream where I started to implement um, Coin shuffle, or actually, it, 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 yeah, it's basically the underlying technology for coin shuffle plus plus and value shuffle. So it's the, ah. the difference is not so large. Um, I started this project, and um, yeah, the sad thing is that I couldn't finish it in, uh, in the internship um, just because there is work remaining. Um, but I hope to um, get back to it. To get back to it in the future. Yeah. Okay, good. Anything else we could look forward to coming from you? Um, so let's see what the future brings. So at the moment, what I'm, what I'm really doing at the moment is writing up my thesis. I'm in the final steps of ah, <laughs> writing up my, my PhD thesis. So I hope I can submit this next month. And uh, Thanks, yeah, okay, so good luck with that. <laughs> this is where all my focus is at the moment. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Good luck, good luck. All right. Well, thank you for your time, Tim. It was awesome. Yeah, thank you for, for well having informed. Me here. Okay. And hopefully, we could probably have another one in the future. 
you implement <laughs> your value chef one. Yeah. <laughs> okay all right thank you guys hope to see you for our next episode ciao wallet wasabi coming soon Even with 50 users, it will take around several minutes uh, to, to finish one round of Coin Shuffle. Now with Coin Shuffle plus plus, because we don't have to wait for all of them to, to perform operations, we do it all at once. Even with 50 or even 100 users, the, the operations will take only several seconds.